Hey guys, in this video we're going to be looking at thermal insulation and how it relates to the practicals you need for your exams. Now we know those examiners are throwing loads and loads of really tricky, really, really nasty questions into the exam papers. So to help you with this, I have written you loads and loads of books full of questions about the required practicals. There's one for combined science and then there's one each for the individual sciences. There are two parts to this practical. In the first part to this practical, we're going to be looking at how different materials act as thermal insulator. So I'm gonna take my metal beakers here, I'm gonna wrap them in various different things, so no wrapping, bubble wrap, foil and paper, and I'm gonna put water in there, and I'm gonna measure the temperature of water over 15 minutes. We're then gonna draw a graph of that and compare how the um, temperature of water changes over time. And in the second practical, we are gonna take our same metal beakers here, and we are going to look at how the thickness of the material affects the thermal insulation. So I'm gonna wrap it in um, bubble wrap, because that's what I have lying around. So no layers, five layers, 10 layers, and then 15 layers. And again, we're gonna measure the temperature for 15 minutes and then I'm going to draw a graph of that. Here are my beakers. I have some plastic lids with holes in them which cover the top completely and then through the hole I'm going to put the temperature probe. These temperature probes are linked up to a sensor here so the probe will go in the top there and the temperature will be recorded on here. Here are my two beakers of water with hot water in, the same volume of water in each. This one has no insulation and this one has bubble wrap in. I'm just going to put the temperature probes in and start the timer. We can see the temperature on the temperature probe has gone up very quickly. I'm using a temperature probe instead of a traditional thermometer because this is going to give us a reading that is easier to read, it's easier to read a number off here than it is to look off here so we're going to make less mistakes, there are going to be less errors introduced and you can also get temperature probes like this which will hook up to a computer and automatically draw a really really nice graph for you. I do not have one that will draw a nice graph for me. I'm going to hand draw the graph myself once this has finished. Now in class you might have four going at once with four thermometers. You might be taking readings every five minutes. I'm going to be taking readings every minute just because it's going to give me a nicer graph. Um, the more data points we have, the higher resolution the um, data points on the experiments are going to be, the better the graph is going to be and the better our data is going to be. So I'm going to leave this to run uh, for 15 minutes, then I'm going to take the results at the end. Now we're going to move on to the difference between uh, paper as an insulator and tin foil as an insulator. Another thing, as well as controlling the volume of the water that is put into these beakers, is the number of layers of insulation. So this one looks a lot bulkier because cardboard and bubble wrap are much bulkier insulation materials as opposed to tin foil, which is a very thin insulation material and can be um, crunched down and squashed a lot easier than bubble wrap can be. Right, uh, that's reached a high temperature, I've started the timer, I'm now going to leave this for another 15 minutes and come back to it at the end. Now I'm going to repeat the experiment with beakers that have been wrapped in different thickness layers of bubble wrap. Here we have our results from the experiment where we tested different types of insulation. You can see we did none, bubble wrap, foil and paper. You can see that the one with no insulation, the temperature dropped further than the other ones because they all started at the same point. This was a complete coincidence. If your data doesn't all start at the same point, do not worry. From this we're going to draw graphs and we're going to talk about how we can compare the data. We can start off by looking at the temperature drop. So no insulation started at 94 and went down to 75. Bubble wrap started at 94 and went down to 81. 
Foil started at 94 and went down to 79. Paper started at 94 and went down to 78. So we can say that no insulation, the temperature drops 19 degrees. For bubble wrap, the temperature drops 13 degrees. For foil, the temperature drops 15 degrees. And for paper, the temperature drops 16 degrees. From this, you can clearly see that no insulation had the largest temperature drop, so the most amount of heat energy was lost to the surroundings, and the one with the least amounts of heat energy lost to the surroundings was bubble wrap as insulation. The other thing we can do is to draw a graph of all of the data points and look at the curve. Starting at 94, when you're plotting points on the graph, it is important to use a cross and to get it as close on the exact point where you want it as possible. When we join these points, we are going to use a line of best fit. We are not going to do a dot to dot. Here you can see all of the points for no insulation. Now I'm going to plot bubble wrap because those two showed the most difference. As you can see at the beginning of this graph, the points are the same. And then when we get to three minutes, the points start to change. We even get a few points that are the same. It is clear to see the differences between these two graphs as we plot the points. When we draw our line of best fits, we need it to be smooth and confident and going through most of the points. These may look very, very straight, but they are in actual fact curves. It is very hard to believe that the blue line is a curve. It is just a very, very subtle curve. If we left the experiment to go on for longer, you would see it clearer because the temperature would start to fall in smaller and smaller increments. I've now added a line for foil onto the graph and you can see it is better than having no insulation but it is not as good an insulator as bubble wrap. Adding the last line on for paper you can see it is basically indistinguishable from foil as an insulator. For this experiment you could be asked to determine the gradient of the line which will give you the rate of temperature falling. When you do that please remember to draw your construction lines on the graph. Bubble wrap was the best insulator from the first set of experiments and that is what we are going to be using from the second set of experiments. I wrapped the beakers in four different thicknesses of bubble wrap. No bubble wrap, two layers, four layers and six layers and repeated the experiment again. Now you can see there is a very, very little difference at the end. Even though from our previous experiments, the um, no layers of bubble wrap, this dropped down to 75, whereas the bit of bubble wrap uh, was roughly comparable to what we had before. This is an error in the experiment. Um, I don't know why this particular error occurred, but they do occur. It could have had something to do with the recording equipment. It could have had something to do with the beakers being already hot when the water went in there. So there wasn't as much um, energy that was uh, freely available to escape. As opposed to when the hot water went into a cold beaker and energy had to be expended heating up the beaker. However, this is the data that we have for the experiment. So this is the data we're going to use. For this experiment, we can see that the higher levels of insulation had the lowest drop in temperature. We have an anomalous result here. This isn't what we'd expect, but maybe two layers of insulation just isn't enough to have an effect. And then we have a 15 degree drop in um, temperature where there is no insulation. For this, you could be asked to draw a line graph as we did before. You could be asked to draw a bar graph of temperature drop versus insulation. Here we would have the number of layers along the bottom or zero layers, two layers, four layers and six layers. The temperature drop going up the side. 
and you can see that I'm drawing bars to indicate the temperature drop. So this is just showing the final result. It's not showing the result as it's going along, it's just showing the final result. And then from this, we can see that the um, the higher layers, the four and the six layers, had the lowest drop in temperature, so they had the most insulating effect. There were two different practicals in this. So the independent variable changed depending on which practical we're doing. It was either the type of insulation or it was the number of layers of insulation. However, both times we were measuring the temperature change, the temperature fall over time. The control variables change depending on which experiment we were doing. Both times we need to keep the volume of water the same and the type of beaker the same. If we were changing the type of insulation, we need to keep the number of layers of insulation the same. But if we were changing the number of layers of insulation, then we need to keep the type of insulation the same. Our risk assessment for this revolves around using hot water, um, using any beakers if you're using glass beakers, and then the use of electricity either with the kettle or with the temperature probe or any laptops, computers you had that connected to. I showed you alternatives and talked about the difference between using thermometers and data probes. I showed you the methods and the graphs and the equipment for this.